screw you, you. DJing's where it's at. I'm out of this. No, I'm just kidding. I did just get a new toy, though, so. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, turn this off. some white noise. Just kidding. I'll do a deck profile. This is the Post Nationals 2024 AWCQ uh, Voices Voice deck list. I uh, played pure. Your boy did not have his invite, so I did two LCQs. I did not make it through. I'm trash. No, I'm just kidding. I played fine. I uh, just did not end up getting it, but I played in some side events. I had a good time. The weekend was absolutely amazing. Um, all the people that I met, uh, obviously thank you for all the new subscribers, all the people that I uh, encountered that already followed the channel, it absolutely blows my mind. Uh, there's a gentleman that I was eating at a crepe restaurant with and he had already started the channel. I don't know, just very cool interactions. Uh, huge shout out to the dude playing Ancient Gears Corbin. I met him and had him sign some of my Ancient Gears stuff just because he is uh, goaded for that. Uh, some fun little takeaways that we got from the weekend. We did end up getting the uh, old, the gold ancient gear coin. So shout out to Kamiar. We also got the gold scapegoat, which was kind of fun. No, but these were honestly, I mean, this was kind of sick just to be able to meet the guy that took ancient gears all the way as far as he did. Um, kind of cool. I actually was looking for him for a long time and I could not find him in the venue. And then some guy had this in his binder and I was like, if I get this from him, I bet I can find, I don't know why, but I was like, I bet I'll find Corbett. And so I bought this, and then, of course, like, not even five minutes later, I found Corbin. Uh, I got, oh, man, I got the 1999's World map, but that's for a different video. We'll put that somewhere else. But uh, point is, the whole weekend was absolutely phenomenal. I had a great time. So, again, shout out to everyone that I got to see and meet there. Um, <laughs> this one's kind of fun, too. We, uh, obviously, we play Voices Voice, so it only made sense that uh, we got the 2 by 2 Voices map. Just kind of some cool little pieces that we picked up over the weekend. But I thought this was definitely a fun little desk piece. Always wanted an uncut uh, Yu-Gi-Oh sheet. All right. So the deck itself is, I would say, pretty uh, clean cut. There's nothing too exceptional here except just the rarity on everything. But three low, triple diviner. Uh, I'm still playing pure. Uh, I've seen other variants. So apparently the Nadir package is, I think, picking up a little bit of momentum. There are definitely some builds where uh, people are cutting the third old, or the old man, which I don't necessarily uh, disagree with. Um, I So three Sephira is never gonna change. Uh, the Cerubus though, I could, I mean, I understand why people are cutting him. Uh, it absolutely feels horrible to draw. Uh, some people are making that the third pre-prep. I was already pre playing three pre-prep, so again, I'm just seeing people taking this card out. I'm not saying that it's, uh, you have to. Uh, two Cerevis, uh, the Ritual, and then two Skull Guardian. Uh, again, one and one for the Pendulum Graph and Cerevis is an option. I was playing two just because I think that Infirm Veiler were going to be pretty popular in Nats, which I was accurate. Uh, even the uh, Ghost Mortar. We did play a shit ton of hand traps because that is modern Yu-Gi-Oh in a nutshell. So three Valor, three Ash, two Ogre, two Nibiru, triple Imperm, and triple Dominus Purge. Uh, the only Conflicting principle between Dominus and Ash is that if you use your Ash, or I'm sorry, Dominus first from hand, you theoretically can't use Ash Blossom, which is your Ash Blossom first, and then your Dominus, or there's no guarantee that you're even going to open up both of these. I don't know if I, I never even had that actually be a conflicting uh, part. Obviously, Imperm into uh, Dominus is sick. Oh, fun fart, or part, fun fart, fun part of the weekend. I went and bought a my third ulti Imperm, because if you look at all my old videos, I'm always bitching about not having a second one, or I'm sorry, a third one went back to the table after purchasing it, and there was two ulti imperms in the sleeve. So, your boy pretty much got a free ulti imperm. Wink, wink, not done. But it was a pretty sweet little plus. Uh, but that is, in fact, so 6, 12, uh, 16 hand traps, which isn't, uh, I wouldn't say anything exceptional. That's just a, I mean, we are playing a fair amount of hand traps. Uh, one Radiance and one Blessing. No shocker there. Uh, three Barrier of the Voiceless, which is, again, kind of the best search of the deck. I don't foresee that going down. Three Pre-Prep, and then uh, two Prayer. So, I don't know what I would necessarily change at this point um, in regard, I mean, Ogre is insane just for the Tenpai matchup. It hits the field spell. There's certain aspects that you can definitely Ogre. Um, 
again, the beer might be fa like falling out of favoritism a little bit, just depending on how the format develops, because the amount of cards that can play through it, I don't know if it, I would deem it necessary. But again, it does hit so much rogue shit that it is, I think it's a kind of a necessary evil. This deck has a very hard time keeping up with Fiendsmith Snake Eye. Uh, I did not have to play any, but there's a reason that Voiceless Voice did not make it to day two. We are just naturally getting Power Corrupt and Board Breakers absolutely just dong on this deck, which is why you have to play Judgment in the side. Um, I still think that this is a good deck. I am not discrediting it at all. I love this deck. I think it's very fun to play, and I think it's good. Uh, however, it does absolutely, like, you cannot fight the fact that there are just cards that have a lot more gas, or I would say decks and engines that have a lot more gas. I do think that Pure is still probably inherently the best way to play this. There is a Nadir engine, again, that I've been seeing floating around, where it's the three Nadir Servant and the Maximus, and you're able to plus off that pretty heavily, so that is definitely worth uh, flirting with. Uh, you know, Dual Mockbird can obviously have a pretty good hindrance on the deck, but I don't... <sighs> I'm not saying that you have to play Dominus by any means either. Um, it is new and it does catch people off guard because it is more or less a second Ash Blossom. So I do think that I mean, once you Ash them once and then you hit them with the Dominus Purge, that's two searches that they've been cut off from, which I don't know how many hands really pull through or push through that too, too well. This is a, what's it, 3, 7, 10, plus, what do you say, 16 hand traps would be 26, 27, 31, plus 8 would be 39. So is that 41 card main? So, you could also cut a card if you really wanted to. You could take out just the old man. Fuck it. I'm so tired of drawing that card. Um, and making it something else, which I, I've never played without it. I honestly should, just to see if it's, uh, you know, that huge of a loss or if that, I don't know if he's detrimental to the strategy. Obviously, it comes in very handy whenever you're pushing for game. Uh, but I don't know if I could say that the old man is actually, like, 100% necessary. So, for anyone that's been playtesting and wants to try a new build, Take the old man out and let me know how that goes for you. All right, that was the main. Let's do the extra. Anima, still anima, especially if you're giving your opponent the relinquished. If you're playing to secure the kaiju, yeah, that's a 3300 anima that you can use to break boards with, so do keep that in mind. Uh, still one masquerade. We are playing one moon of the closed heaven. We did not use this for going into uh, Requiem, or whatever the fuck it's called, uh, it's well, Requiem is the Ring 2, or Link 2, I'm sorry, I don't remember what the Link 1 is called, uh, it shows you how much I've playtested against that deck, but we actually used her for her effect, and that didn't come up against the Labyrinth player, I might have been the only person at the YCS that used Closed Heaven for her actual effect, but nonetheless, it is there. Uh, you use two of your monsters, two of your opponent's monsters, and you can go into Underworld Goddess. Uh, SP Little Knight, again, just solid board breaker, we do play... The one dark and the one Lina, uh, the light and dark charmer, I think that those are just as justified as ever. Still two Dynamondo, I don't think that this needs to change. And then we did play the one uh, Underworld Goddess, which again pairs very nicely with Close to Heaven. I know that a lot of Fiendsmith Snake Eye decks are too tight in the extra deck to even be able to play her. We, however, have the ability to, so there's no reason not to in my mind. And again, it catches your opponent off guard quite a bit, taking two of their monsters and two of yours and putting them into a that is insane. Uh, just for some text, these, this was Big Eye, I swapped that shit, there were multiple times where Flare Dragon would have came up and been an amazing uh, push, or just being able to uh, put my opponent in a very weird position, and so, I'm not saying, that, again, these are not mandatory by any means, this just seemed like a, a good tech, there was an option where I could have made her, but I didn't really need to, so I did not, um, so again, these can be theoretically whatever the hell you want them to be. Uh, but I did find that there was like two or three times where I was like, damn, if I had Flare Dragon right now, I'd be totally <laughs> in a different position. And I know that sounds weird, but as gimmicky as he is, I do think he has utility. So I'm going to play moving forward just to see, you know, it's just a, a time card, if anything, or just being able to make that, like, if you can't OTK, just going into that and putting your opponent on one to two card activations is a really weird position. Uh, Harmonizer is good just in terms of her graveyard removal. Um, but again, I don't know if I necessarily deem her... 100% required, just another good card that I'm trying out. We're still playing the Herald just because it is the ritual deck and being able to send with Diviner is still good. The ends, oh, oh shit, we'll do Chaos Angel as the other rank and then the one end still just to be able to send off of Diviner and being able to plop, uh, pop any card is very, very nice. Uh, again, I would, I would say this is like a tech spot, maybe these two. 
would say this is mandatory. I don't know. It just really depends on your build. But I would say for the most part, there is a lot of wiggle room in the extra deck. I would definitely, man, I feel like Flare Dragon would have been a really solid call to play. And I, my buddy and I talked about it. I just never pulled the trigger on it. And again, there was a couple instances where I was like, damn it, Flare Dragon would have been so clutch right now. So now that I say that, you know, it's never going to come up. But that's where the extra deck sits as of right now. Side deck, one Magnemut, cards cracked. Uh, you can honestly play Drew Storm uh, and, oh shit, what's that one? I'm not even gonna try and push the name. Uh, Saranir, I think, Drew Storm and Saranir, or those other two. But yeah, you can play a, a much bigger Bestial package if you'd like. I only uh, ran the one Magnemut, but the card is still inside. Uh, three Cosmic, the Joel Lockbird is, uh, honestly, if you have the ability to move those to the main, <laughs> I would do it just to even max up on your hand count. Uh, or hand trap count even more. Uh, for the one, so three Cyclone, I think for Runic, I think there's fucking Ubel, the Nightmare Pain. There are so many goddamn cards that I don't even have to try and justify Cosmic Cyclone. That card is not going anywhere. Uh, one Duster, there can only be one in Gozen for the one that was in the side. Uh, there can only be one that's cracked. Gozen match and certain matchups can be good. And Feather Duster, I still think, I mean, if you can go plus two or plus three off of one spell card, hell yeah, brother. Three Judgment, again, to be able to stop. Uh, Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplets, that does not, uh, those cards just absolutely shit on this deck. I don't think that there's any reason to not play this, especially if your board is, you know, your Omni Negate, uh, plus another interaction with, say, like a trap or a hand trap. Um, you should typically just organically get, I would say, two, three, if not four interruptions, just how the deck naturally plays out with hand traps. Having the ability to set this on turn one with another Omni Negate just, I feel like, puts you in such a commanding position that you typically should never be losing that game. And then we do play the three evenly matched because this card makes the match unevenly matched. So I I would say that the, the side deck is still pretty standard in terms of blowout cards or just, you know, same utility. I don't think that there's uh, anything too much different here. Dimensional Barrier has been kind of phased out a little bit, I would say. But, uh, you know, moving forward, we'll see how the format develops. I don't think that... Uh, Man, I don't know. We'll see what the ban list looks like in August, but as of right now, that's pretty straightforward. I don't... I'll probably play, you know, Voiceless, obviously, moving forward, but I do have Ancient Gears that I need to get dialed in. That deck looks... I mean, it is so much fun. I just have to learn how to play it better. Um, so forgive me for the, the misplays that we're dealing with. But we're not here to focus on the negatives. We're here to focus on how awesome Voiceless Voice is. But yeah, guys, that is the deck. Uh, 41 cards. It runs very smoothly. Again, you can still break it as a ritual card or a ritual deck. So if I could just never open the ritual spells in my opening hands or the old man, I would just do that every time. But I can't prohibit that from happening. Uh, but no, guys, I think that's a pretty fair update. If you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. The only really new thing that it's incorporating is the Dominus Purge. Everything else is just kind of uh, getting your ratios correct. We'll do a test and see how it pops out. Okay. Uh, interesting. Well, oh, why the fuck? Well, we talked shit, and there it is. I mean, you can still get far with this, but having or having more hand traps is always ideal. Again, guys, thank you very much. I'm not going to prolong the video too much more. I can do a ancient gear profile here coming up, but I'll have some more replays. Uh, but otherwise, we're on the road to 1,900 subscribers, so I really do appreciate it. Wow, every goddamn time that ritual spell card. Not horrible. We're opening up some funky hands, but that's your view in a nutshell. All right, guys, thank you very much. I'm gonna get back to DJing. So I'll see you in the next one.